Hi there, welcome to section 2.6, Ratios and Proportions. I feel like section 2.6 is going to be a review for you guys. Um, we'll talk about a couple things here. First of all, um, let's talk about rates. Or sorry, let's talk about a ratio. Just kidding. A ratio is compa a comparison of two things or two numbers by division. We write ratios. It looks a lot like a fraction then if it's by division. The first way that we write this is the word 2, x, 2y. Two Don't use that one real frequently. We could use x colon y, and you read it as x to y. Or we could use our most traditional one, which is x over y. You could read that as x to y or x over y. So a ratio is one fraction. A proportion is an equation, so we know we've got an equal sign stating that two ratios are equal. So a ratio looks like a fraction. A proportion looks like two equal fractions or ratios. I feel pretty confident that you guys have solve proportions before and we've kind of already done them when we've done our own um, equation so for example a proportion might be something like an x over six equals one over three that is an equation right it states that two ratios are equal and we could probably by common sense figure out what x equals in this particular case sometimes you have to work a little harder to figure out what x equals we're going to do two things with proportions. We're going to solve them. But first, we're going to look at are they actually equivalent ratios. So practice number one, it says determine whether the ratios are equivalent. So basically, I'm taking a 4 fifths. I'm taking a 24 over 30. And I'm putting an equal sign, but there's really a question mark. Are they equal? Is that true or false? If you've noticed, we've got a lot of trues and falses in our um, algebra stuff. We've done a lot with that. You've got two options. One, you could simplify, see if they simplify to the same thing. Or two, you could cross multiply. Different people have a different preference. I'm going to cross multiply first, and we're going to talk about this in the, just a second. But if you cross multiply, multiply across, 4 times 30 is 120. We bring the equal sign straight down. I'm going to keep the question mark. 5 times 24, wow, that comes out to a 120 as well. So yes, these are equivalent fractions, equivalent ratios. If we simplified, 4 fifths is in simplest form. 24 thirtieths, we could divide both of those guys by, what, 6? So 24 divided by 6 is 4. 30 divided by 6 is 5. They both simplify down to 4 fifths. You've got to have equal things on both sides either way. So we just did this. And we've got a technical term for means, extremes, property of proportion. I'm not going to worry about what the means and the extremes are because we know this is cross-multiplying. When you cross-multiply, you do have to have an equals in the middle. In words, it's means equals extremes. I'm not even going to put that up there because means are like the top left and the bottom right, and extremes are the bottom left and the top right. All we worry about is that we multiply across and put an equals between them. So let's, in symbols, let's say if we've got a proportion, A over B equals C over D, that means that A times D has to be equal to B times C. Please note the equal sign in the middle. We don't lose the equation. We still have it. And we just did an example. Is everybody okay with not putting another example down? I think that's fine, right? So let's just do uh, letter B. By the way, we can have fractions in our, or decimals in our uh, ratios. Four tenths over eight tenths and seven tenths over one and 1.4. And we could do the same thing. Simplify. 
Your calculator is going to have trouble, by the way, if you're using the fraction button. So you might have to use division and turn them both into decimals or cross multiply. So for B, we've got 6 eighths and 24 20 eighths. You could simplify or you could cross multiply. Let's cross multiply first. So, and it doesn't matter which way you go diagonally first. Uh, 6 times 24 or 28, I believe that is 168. Check my math. 8 times 24 should end with a 2. That would be 192. So are these a proportion or are they equivalent ratios? Definitely not, right? We got 168 is not equal to 192. If we simplified 6 eighths, divide both of those guys by 2, and we'd have 3 fourths. If we simplified 24 20 eighths, uh, what goes into both of those? 4. We would have 6 over 7. Definitely not equal. So use whichever method you like better. It doesn't matter to me as long as you have some work. If I had an explain on here, this is your work. Or this is your work. So I need to see those things so that I know, number one, which method you used, and number two, why you got the yes or no that you did. All right, and that brings us to solving. I feel like number three we can skip. Let's keep it um, down to number four. Because we did this in section two, four B, I believe. We just cross multiplied, right? Number four, we're going to do the same thing. Remember, I'm going to put parentheses around the bits and pieces because I want to keep them together. So when I cross multiply, I've got a nine that I'm going to distribute with the two plus W. I've got an equal sign and a six times 12. I know that you might go ahead and do that. Six times 12 is 72. We can do this, we have an 18 plus a 9w. And now we've just got an old fashioned equation to solve. So we've gotten rid of the fraction and we've gone into just solving an equation. All my w's are already on the left hand side. This 18, I've got to get to the other side, so I'm going to subtract it. So I'm going to have a 9w. Uh, 72 minus 18, oh uh, gosh, 54. And then we all know to finish this, we're going to divide by 9 and get a w equals 6. Remember, there is a built-in check. I could substitute that 6. 2 plus 6 is 8 over 6 equals 12 over 9. And then I could do a check by either simplifying or cross-multiplying again. 72 equals 72. Let's talk for a second about rate. You've actually talked about rate before, and we use it all the time. A rate is a ratio of two measurements with different units, like miles per hour. Right? Really what we're doing is miles per hour. Remember how I mentioned that um, per is another word for division? Or uh, another car one, I bet you you're thinking of. Lots of people are worried about miles per gallon. So a unit rate is when you've simplified it down and your denominator equals 1. You've actually done the um, work. Another good example, you guys, if you've got jobs, what do you wonder about if you're looking for a job? Dollars per hour, right? Isn't that a kind of an important thing if you're working? So we could do um, work with rates and turn a rate because I could tell you my rate is I went 300 miles and used 8 gallons of gas. What was my rate? Well, 300 miles and 8 gallons. If I do the division, 300 divided by 8, I'm going to know what my unit rate is or how many miles for every one gallon. And we could solve that by a proportion as well. A scale is used to make a scale model of something that's either really big, like the solar system, or really small, like, um, I don't know, 
that you make models of train of trains or planes or automobiles so that you've got an, a convenient size. So scale model. And in order to make a scale model, we've got to have a unit rate. We've got to have a conversion. We've got to have a ratio. So let's talk about Trent and his 30-mile bike ride. Every Saturday he goes for a 30-mile bike ride. He takes four hours to do it. If he decided to ride for six hours instead, how far would he go? Notice in every word problem, it tells you what you're looking for. So here's what our question is. How far, that'll be our X, can he ride in six, hour, six hours? So let's set this up as a proportion. So we're going to have a ratio equals a ratio. The first sentence tells us our first, well, almost, Two sentences tells us our first ratio. 30 mile bike ride every Saturday, four hours. 30 miles, four hours. How far can he ride in six hours? I purposely put the labels there because you want to make sure everything's nice and neat and lined up when you set up a, a ratio or proportion. So my hours should be down here and my miles should be up on the top with the other miles. So we know he's going six hours. We don't know how many miles he's going. And then we can just ignore the units and cross multiply to solve this. So 30 times six is 180. Four times x is four times x. Divide both sides by four. And we get what, x equals 45 miles. Does that sound about right? Notice how I put my label on the answer. Well, we could also find Trent's unit rate. How far does he go for every one hour? Unit rate. Because a unit rate is when your denominator is 1. So we would take our 30 miles in 4 hours. We would do the division. 30 miles in 4 hours means that he goes, what, 7.5 miles in every 1 hour. And I just went to my calculator and I divided. 30 divided by 4 gives me 7.5. So we can use a proportion to figure out, or we could use a unit rate. You could do either one, but again, I need to see your work to know which way you're setting this problem up. So tell me if you find the unit rate. Show me the uh, proportion if you use a proportion. All right. Number six in a road atlas. Uh, the scale for the map of Connecticut is five inches equals 41 miles. What's the distance represented by two and a half inches on the map? Now, you might be able to figure this out in your head, and we could figure out a uh, unit rate if we wanted, but I see right here where we could have half of a proportion. Um, right here, what is the distance? So that's going to be what my x is. So if I've got 5 inches for every 41 miles, please make sure that your inches are on the top for your second ratio, so 2.5 inches and x miles. And then we can cross multiply from there. Does everybody feel confident with cross multiplying? Hopefully you do, because I'm not going to finish this problem. I feel like you can do that on your own. So explain in your own words how to cross multiply. Now that we have that last problem set up, what would you do next? What do you need to do in order to cross multiply? And here's a good problem for you to cross, multiply, and solve. x plus 2 over 3 equals x minus 2 over 5. Uh, a little helpful hint, I would suggest that you put parentheses around those two numerators so that you remember to distribute when you do cross, multiply. That is it for section 2.6. Have a great day. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.